Hey everyone, so I'm back. I wanted to help everyone out by explaining what some of the most basic tools that you probably have just glossed over after picking up a camera do in an advanced level and how misinterpreting what these things do can cause you some trouble on the back end, especially when you see people on YouTube or Instagram trying to give you tutorials or explain how these things work um, in a very crude way very unsophisticated and because of that it can damage your creative decision making down your pipeline it can either make or break just how far you can take most of the images you produce with your camera so the very first thing that's misunderstood is chromatic adaptation now this is kind of directed at people that use davinci resolve because it does have a model inside of the program that you can reference and use and it's very nice however it has one specific intended purpose it's more like a scalpel than a sledgehammer and there's a lot of people that are spreading information that's just genuinely wrong and they're saying that this tool can be used to correct the white balance on your camera now perceptually yes but technically no and i'll explain why but in order for me to explain why on the back end i have to explain to you what the system that is used and developed for that specific process is exactly what i'm referring to exactly is cat02 or chromatic adaptation transform 2002. i have some notes right here so i'm just going to read them this is a mathematical model that simulates how the human visual system adapts to different lighting conditions specifically how we perceive colors when the illuminant or light source changes it's part of the cie cam02 color appearance model which attempts to describe perceived color, not just measured color. The problem it solves is when you move from sunlight, which is considered D65 or bluish white, to tungsten light, which is more of a warm yellow to our eyes. Our eyes tend to automatically adapt to this. A white paper will still look white to you when you look at it through both source illuminants. Even though the source illuminate spectrum changed drastically, cameras will not do this automatically and they record literal spectral values that are assigned based off of the white balance you put in the camera. See? T02 is the math that emulates the eye's adaptive process so that colors look consistent when transformed from one light source to another. Allow me to put this very simply for you. You can nail your white balance in cool light and warm light and have your gray cards and white cards look identical, but colors will still be reproduced differently. Reds, blues, and greens will be deeper, brighter, warmer, colder, depending on the light that's bouncing off of it. Think of it like this. The colder light has higher wavelengths that bounce off of things that look blue better when there's blue light aimed at them. And that becomes a lot less prevalent when you aim something warm at it. That blue will look less poppy. That's the best way I can put it. Now, here's the issue that people have with this. They're using it for white balancing. That is not what you should be doing. What I will tell you is that you should be nailing your white balancing in pre-production inside of your camera using white and gray cards so that you can then use chromatic adaptation as an artistic tool. Because guess what? You can make your image look on a perceptual level different in an artistic way and make it subtly colder or warmer on the back end using the chromatic adaptation tools as opposed to using them to correct your footage. And I'll say this again, you should not use chromatic adaptation as a sledgehammer that fixes your footage. And when I mean sledgehammer and scalpel, I mean sledgehammer is very broad and scalpel is very specific. This is a scalpel we're talking about in this case instance. Now here's the second misconception. So color balancing, fixing colors, and developing your color, normalizing your footage is different than color grading, okay? People think when you start changing the colors and the exposure and the contrast of your footage that it's color grading. I'd argue and say that the grading's on the back end and that's when all the artistic decisions are being made. When you're establishing exposure and contrast, which is in the color balancing portion, what a lot of people don't understand is that those are two separate processes. I'm changing my starting point when I'm changing my exposure. And then I am changing the way the tonal values are distributed when I'm putting my contrast in. The exposure comes first, the contrast comes second. Some 
people that I watch that give tutorials try to do both at the same time. You can do that. However, you're mixing ingredients that don't really need to go with each other. You should establish where your baseline is and where your tonal relationships is. Like in my other videos where I say you need to know where gray is, you need to know where white is, and you need to know where the shadows are, right? And it's about preserving these tonal relationships, okay? It's not about the perfect exposure. There's no such thing as a perfect exposure. Anything can be used, right, with artistic intent. However, how much of that data do you want to preserve and how much do you need? Never thought about that, did you? So, in the future, establish your exposure right if you didn't get the exposure right in camera you can reset the exposure in post just by changing where those values lie on the histogram linearly like up and down you're not pushing and pulling okay you're adjusting up and down and then when you come around to putting your contrast on it's like spreading everything apart just enough to give it a bit of separation and pop okay this is the third part this is the most important part if you ask me greatly misunderstood thing everyone looks at it and goes ah yes it does this and then they just forget about it what i'm referring to is saturation now saturation is the intensity and richness of colors right but what most people don't understand is that in most editing softwares lightroom photoshop premiere pro davinci resolve even sony vegas back in the day saturation has the same way of boosting the color intensity which is through rgb values when you increase rgb values those values get brighter perceptually on your screen the luminance just becomes higher it's a very basic thing to do which is why most programs have it but what i want to tell you is that you need to use it with restraint because going too far and overboard does make your image look bad but there's times where we don't need to use this process because it's considered additive it's adding information into your video or your photo therefore stretching values that you might otherwise not want to be moved so if i don't want my image to get perceptually brighter what do i do well there's ways around this i might not be able to do this in other programs but i know how to do it in davinci and we can apply a subtractive saturation model and what is this exactly it's basically making it so that you are not allowing the program to increase the color intensity and the luminance at the same time going up when you increase your saturation. You're instead increasing the richness of those colors so that they're perceptually more dense and they look more believable to the human eye and they are more reminiscent of what film used to look like. Subtractive saturation is part of achieving color density and color density is another thing that's overlooked that's attached to this very closely. Deep reds and deep yellows look a lot nicer on your eyes than bright reds and bright yellows. And if you're going for the film look, look that is something that you absolutely have to figure out how to make happen so the key takeaway from this is if you're using a traditional saturation model in any program it's going to be increasing the exposure of your footage or your photo in the background ever so slightly the higher you crank on it and that could be a good or a bad thing but now that you're aware that it's happening you can make the choice whether you want that to happen and you want your images to look a little bit brighter or you'd rather go for a subtractive approach color grading isn't about adjusting sliders. It's about understanding physics. I hope that helped everybody and I'll see you guys soon.